Transporting energy might sound like a boring business, but there's nothing boring about total returns like this. Over the past five years, Hess Midstream left the S&P 500 in its dust. 135% versus 90% isn't even close, and the 8% distribution has grown faster than Jack's Beanstalk. Today, we're going to look at how a midstream company can deliver a river of cash. I've been wanting to review Hess Midstream for about six months, but other investment news kept distracting me, like short reports and new funds and what's the Fed doing? A lot of noise. Meanwhile, Hess Midstream has been the quiet achiever, and as you'll see, it just keeps sending out fat distributions to its investors like clockwork. Now that I've had a chance to really focus on it properly, I'm excited to share what I've learned. Let's dive straight into the distributions. This chart is my favorite shape, an upward sloping wedge. The other thing that stands out to me is during the 2020 crash, no cuts. In fact, during 2020, the distributions actually increased every single quarter. As I record this, the yield is 8.05%. And if we go to Seeking Alpha and click on dividends and then dividend yield, the four-year average is 8.06%. So right in line with average. There are too many numbers here to analyze, but I want to show you just one number that I thought was interesting. If you bought Hess Midstream five years ago, the yield was probably about 8%, but because the distributions have grown, your yield on cost would now be 12.2%. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I retired in 2017, and that's when I got serious about researching my investments in greater depth because, well, now they pay for everything. I mostly focus on stocks and funds paying consistent yields of 8%, which is exactly what this one does. Hess Midstream, ticker symbol H-E-S-M, is in the energy business, as in oil and gas. The midstream part explains their role in the energy business. So using a river metaphor, the energy sector can broadly be divided into upstream, midstream, and downstream. Upstream covers finding and extracting the oil and gas from the earth, in this case, North Dakota. Downstream is distribution of the oil or gas, the finished product, to the end user. For example, to your house so you can literally cook with gas or take a hot shower. In between these two is, you guessed it, midstream. Midstream includes boring functions like transportation from the well, storage, and treatments such as extracting waste or compressing gas. These midstream facilities are expensive to build, so it's not an easy business to get into. However, governments prefer to obtain energy domestically instead of relying on other countries, so they incentivize the financing of these pipelines and facilities with tax-favorable structures. It's a similar concept to real estate investment trusts or REITs having a pass-through tax structure in exchange for distributing 90% of their net income to shareholders. However, in this case, the tax structure is usually a master limited partnership or MLP. And that's how Hess Midstream began back in 2015, an MLP. A lot of investors, including me, avoid MLPs because they issue K-1 tax forms and those delay the tax filing process. It's a bit annoying. So the good news is that Hess Midstream converted to a C corporation for taxation purposes in 2019. Therefore, no K-1 form. Even though Hess Midstream doesn't issue a K-1, it still delivers some of the tax benefits of an MLP. In 2022, that meant return of capital for approximately a third of the distributions. And this is the good kind of return of capital, meaning it's tax deferral. Instead of paying income tax on return of capital, it lowers your cost basis when you eventually sell and at that point, you'd pay capital gains tax. Qualify that with, I'm not a tax consultant. I'm merely pointing out that the 2022 tax treatment is as outlined on this form 8937. And please direct any tax questions to your accountant, not to me. Apart from the yield, here's what I like about HESM. The energy sector is not really known for its stability, but these midstream companies can be an exception to that because of the way their fees are structured. Hess Midstream's contracts contain minimum volume commitments that guarantee 80% of revenues on a rolling three-year basis. There are also inflation riders that can provide additional fees. So even if there's a spike in energy prices and demand drops, most of the revenue is protected. This chart shows oil prices bouncing around for the past eight years. Meanwhile, Hess Midstream earnings up and to the right. 
And those earnings drive the constantly expanding distributions, which is what we're focused on. Reading through the investor presentations, management has consistently focused on growing distributions by at least 5% per year, and the results have far exceeded that. This chart shows how in recent years, management issued a target of 5% growth in distribution per share, then went on to deliver more like double that. Over the past five years, the distributions have grown at a compound rate of 11.82% per year. Seeking Alpha gives that a B plus rating, and I think I'd give it an A plus rating. This fits quite nicely into my investment goal, which is to generate 8% in pre-tax income and grow that income faster than inflation. Apple is famous for using stock buybacks to create shareholder value. In other words, they reduce the public supply of shares to drive the price up. And Hess Midstream uses the same strategy. The most recent example was on November the 14th, 2023, when they announced a $100 million buyback, also known as a repurchase. A few things stand out from the statement they issued. The CFO said they prioritize return of capital. And as I explained earlier, that's the good version of tax efficient return of capital. Secondly, they've bought back over $1.5 billion worth of stock so far. Thirdly, they have another billion dollars up their sleeve earmarked for additional buybacks. And last but not least, he repeats their measure of growing distributions annually by at least 5% through 2025. In October 2023, Chevron announced the acquisition of Hess Corporation for $53 billion. Hess shareholders will receive Chevron stock at a price that was approximately 10% above the market price when that deal was announced in October. So what does this mean for Hess Midstream? Two benefits. Firstly, Hess Midstream's primary customer will switch from a $40 billion company, Hess Corporation, to a massive $268 billion company, Chevron. And that increases the stability of their future. Secondly, there's a high probability that Hess Midstream shareholders will benefit from a profitable buyout of their shares. When Chevron purchased Noble Energy in 2020, they followed up with the purchase of Noble Midstream in 2021. So the same thing may happen with Hess. Before we move on to the bear case, a huge chunk of the information about HESM came from five reports I read on Seeking Alpha. I don't buy a stock or a fund without first checking it on Seeking Alpha. I'll put a link in the description to their current promotion and my favorite analysis of the five, which was this one, because it covers the Chevron news that I just mentioned. Here are the risks and concerns that I have about HESM. Hess Midstream was created by Hess Corporation, and even though Hess Midstream services other clients, Big Daddy Hess is customer number one, and until it becomes Big Daddy Chevron, of course. That relationship has been very fruitful, but it's also important to understand that Hess Midstream doesn't operate as a completely free agent. The fortunes of the two companies are somewhat intertwined. Hess Midstream can't just dump Hess Corporation if they want to pivot their business to something else. This doesn't present any near-term problems for Hess Midstream. It just means that if you own HESM, you should keep an eye on Hess and now with the pending acquisition, also Chevron. The other risk factor is just the energy sector in general. If oil prices collapsed, it wouldn't have much effect on Hess Midstream's near-term revenue, but it could eventually affect them over the long term when the contracts are due for renewal. So over the long term, Hess Midstream is exposed to the same risk as any other energy company, wars, changes in government regulation, etc. This one reminds me a bit of Main Street Capital. It just quietly pumps out steady income that grows each year. I plan to start buying it over the next month or two as my next dividends roll in. It's an individual company, which makes it riskier, obviously, than a fund, so I'll probably cap the allocation at around 3%. Before I go, I've been using Simply Safe Dividends to keep track of my income portfolio and upcoming payouts, and it's excellent. I really like it. But at 500 bucks a year, it ain't cheap. So I've been on the lookout for something a bit more affordable. This snowball tracker is less than a quarter of the price and it's really well designed. So I'm doing a free trial right now and I plan to do a comparison of those two programs in a future video. If you don't want to wait for that, I contacted them and they agreed to offer Armchair Income viewers a 10% discount. If you use the link in the description, the discount isn't shown on the pricing page, but it appears when you create a free account and then click subscribe. I haven't pulled the trigger yet, still doing the free trial, but so far, so good. Okay, time to wrap up Hess Midstream. It is a contender for the top 10 income playlist. 
but I'll wait until I've invested my own money before deciding whether to include it or not. More armchair income coming soon.